So my name's Christopher Parsons and I'm a Network Response Officer for Western Power. I've been doing this role for 13 years or so now. I feel like I've been here forever. I feel like part, I'm part of the furniture here now, you know, part of the scenery. So I, I definitely do have a nickname. They, they call me OCD. That's for a reason. I, 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 I'm, I'm a bit methodical. I like to check things God knows how many times. Sometimes I check them so many times I've forgotten that I've checked them, so I'll check them again anyway. The job's just massively diverse. Faults are care 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if a call comes through uh, at two o'clock in the morning, I, yeah, I'll need to get myself out of bed, get myself changed and quickly get to where I need to be. So yeah, here we are at the uh, Balcata Depot. Um, my shift started this morning at six o'clock. I had some little bits to do in the office first, so I've come here to get myself sorted, get the vehicle sorted, and now we're about ready to, uh, to go to my first job. This is a, a typical vehicle that a network response officer would have. Uh, we all get one issued to us that we keep for the duration, so this is it's kind of my company car. The bodywork is all aluminium, it's been custom made for the purpose, so it's not an off-the-shelf product, it's been developed for a network response officer, just to cater for our tools, our sticks, our Kevrick crane, our drawers, everything we need is on this vehicle and it works very, very well. So it, it is actually a response vehicle in that it has lights and it has sirens and it carries a similar sort of weighting as, as uh, the Fire Brigade, DFUS and, and the Yambos. We will only choose to use our lights and sirens in the event of a genuine emergency. So I just thought I'd check my emails now, you know, this is, again, it's a chance for me to catch up on some of the stuff that we need to know. Tomorrow, I could be sat on the top of a hill in Leonard Brook with a fantastic 360 degree view and the sun beaming on my face. So I was on the email and this, this particular program, our power on mobile, it takes charge of everything. It turned off my email and it's telling me that there's a, a, a pillar that's been knocked and we need to go and have a look at it. So we can find out where it is, the sat nav, will take me exactly to where I need to be. So I'm 18 kilometers away. Yeah, I feel uh, yeah, I feel very privileged to be doing what I'm doing. It's it, it's great to be able to get to the job. I'm the only one there. You know, I'm the, the 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 first point of contact for Western Power, and I'm there and I'm doing what I need to do to keep the people safe. I'm turning the power off. I'm turning the power on. I'm doing whatever is required, as long as everybody's safe. Uh, and, and most customers appreciate that, you know. Yep, so I've just pulled up to the site. Uh, we've had reports of a pillar, which is a little green dome that's been hit by a vehicle or it's been damaged by something. We're not so sure what it is at the moment. If you see anything like this with a crack or a split, we need to attend to it. It literally is as good as a wire down, you know, it's, it's, it's particularly hazardous. So yeah, you can see uh, on a nice 40 degree day, it can be quite energetic work. I try to keep myself a bit fit, but I uh, still end up out of breath battling with this, with this grass. Just sit down there, probably about right. Tight. 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 Beautiful, absolutely spot on there. It does get quite hot, quite exhausting. You know, that's why I need to go to the gym to keep fit. Mm. We get in there, check the connections, make sure they're tight, put the lid on, a couple of photos, that's it, job complete, you know. I can then accept and dispatch myself to the next job. And that's the way it goes, it's just fluid, we just keep on going from job to job. The job does affect the family life, because I work shift work, so we say we work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So our Christmas day, for example, I could be working, you know. Um, the kids have grown up with it, they, they don't know any different, and, and they're quite happy. I think they're quite proud of the fact that Dad's a, a network response officer. I know certainly the son loves the car with the lights, Yeah, so here I am in Mosman Park. Um, I was given the job for a pole hit. It's been hit by a truck, apparently. Um, so what, the first thing I did when I got here was just to make sure that the, uh, the metal work of the street light isn't alive, because there's obviously mains cables in there. We don't want to make sure they're pinched and damaged. I've used the witch's hats left by others to uh, sort of create a bit of a safe zone, but it's still turned on. As far as I know, the street light is still energized inside. So my next step now is to electrically de-energize the street light. And then I can start looking at trying to get the street light out of the ground or laid on the ground safe, you know, so it's not across a public pathway. It appears that the, the street light here is fed from a, a green dome, uh, like a little bit like the one we just repaired. It's fed from a green dome just on the side of that gate. Hi, it's Chris from Western Power. We'll just be out in a moment. Okay, thank you. So it's often a problem with street lights. I think for me, 
I find street lights probably the most difficult thing we do, believe it or not. They look simple, but trying to find out where they're fed from, trying to prove that the thing's off, you know? If it's a pole down with wires, you can see it. You turn it off, you prove it, and then it's off. Whereas a street light, you never really know. Yeah, so we've located the green dome. Um, it is actually right tucked in the corner behind this tree. And I don't think I'm gonna struggle getting through there. So I'm gonna see if I can do some um, exploring through the middle there, I think, or around, I don't know. Let's have a look. So hard to work in there? Uh, just a bit. I, I'm not even sure if I can get out, actually. <laughs> ah, that's out, right. So that's the only fuse in there, so it's probable that it's part of my, um, it's the feed to my street light. But again, until I absolutely prove it, I can't guarantee it. But I'm feeling more confident than I was two minutes ago. Right. A bit awkward, but I got there in the end, found the fuse. The fuse is out, it's tagged out, so um, I believe we're safer. Um, yeah, so. Next step, we'll go and uh, get rid of the street light. Any network related power, whether it be a green dome, whether it be a power line down, it needs to be treated as live until we get there and deem it otherwise. So it seems that it's electrically safe. However, I still haven't checked to see whether it's bolted, bent there. If the, if the pole has bent over double, um, there may well be that the cable's pinched or broken underneath there. So again, I can't just assume there's movement of this in here. <laughs> That's the cable. Yeah, the worst thing about the job is, is when customers don't understand that, we're here to help them. I mean, yes, I, I can turn people's power off. It's disappointing. I've, I've lost power at my own house, and, I, I, and immediately I feel, what the, you know, what's going on here? You feel that kind of disappointment when you've lost your power. I won't do anything, um, you know, if it's not for the right reason. So if I turn a customer's power off, if I turn the street off, I've done it to keep me safe, you know. Managed to get the cable out, here we go. That's a success. And it's not damaged, which is fantastic. So the guys can reuse that. So I'm just gonna terminate that in a green dome, uh, a new round pillar, and we'll put this somewhere around here. I'll get rid of these cuttings, move that out the way. The job's good and we'll, uh, it'll all be safe, electrically safe, mechanically safe, public safe, everybody's safe, fantastic. The job can be very, very high stress. I mean, some of the situations we go to, we are under immense pressure, especially from other emergency services who can't do their job um, because un until we've made our site safe, um, you've got to be very, very, you've got to be able to, to, to control your adrenaline. So we're going to backfill this, make sure this is nice and secure, put the lid on it, and then plenty of danger tape on it. If this is temporary until we re uh, get a replacement street light, crews will come next, they'll remove that pole to remove any kind of mechanical hazard. And that's the job done, really. It's nice to uh, kind of complete a job and to go away knowing that you've done what you, support, what you can do to, to keep everybody safe. So, yeah, on to the next one. Looking forward to it. No idea what it's going to be, but we'll, we'll see. We'll soon find out. You know, 20 years ago when I was, uh, you know, working back in the UK, you know, and I'm wiring houses, it's pretty mundane. Here I am, I can literally be going to one house and it's a, it's just no power and it's a fairly standard thing and you establish what the cause is. The next minute you've got power lines down, you've got cars crashed into poles, it's just completely mad and it's just so varied. And, and the job becomes super exciting and just brings you out your shell, it's just great. You just don't know what you're going to be dealing with that day. You just can't, you can't predict anything with this job.